Good morning and welcome to Grace Lutheran Church's Sunday morning worship service for September the 27th. And today we're going to talk about your direction. Especially from the book of Ezekiel, God is talking to the people that Ezekiel is supposed to prophesy to. He said, Why do you lose your direction, O Israel? Please come back to the Lord. Follow His direction and His commandments. Too often we think of life as going from point A to point B, but in reality our life is such a series of misdirections and lost road maps and direction that we sometimes don't even know that we're on the wrong path until it's too late. And so God tells us to follow the way, come back and follow His direction, His commandments, His laws and statutes. He said, why will you die, O Israel? He said, follow me. And so sit back and let us rejoice with our Lord and give thanks for his blessings and let us follow in the right direction.
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome on this beautiful Sunday morning here to Grace Lutheran Church. And for all those of you who are joining us by video, we thank you for choosing to worship with us this Sunday. Of course, being now in the fall season, we're into a very busy time of the year. So just a couple of announcements to make sure that we're all on the same page. Tomorrow, of course, at 10 o'clock is our ladies quilting downstairs at 10 o'clock. Also, next Sunday, next Sunday is going to be a busy Sunday. It is, we recognize Worldwide Communion Sunday, a day in which all Christian denominations actually celebrate Holy Communion as a sign to show of the universal worldwide church. It is also, we are going to recognize Lutheran World Relief Blanket Sunday. So we're going to have on the pews our quilts that the ladies have made here at the church over the past year to dedicate them as they take them then to Lutheran World Relief. So we're going to bless them next week and you'll be able to see them on display. Also next Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock, for those of you who are interested, I'm going to do a Blessing of the Pets service. It's about 15 minutes, 20 minutes long. And instead of having you bring your pets here to the church, we're going to try it by the computer or telephone. You can either join by telephone or by computer, in which we'll do our little brief service over Zoom. And then for those who can call in to hear the service, and we'll have blessing of your pets. I find out that sometimes it's easier that the pet stays in their home than bringing them to a strange location. Council meeting is Wednesday, October the 7th. We are still looking for members to fill council offices. We have several very important offices to fill this term. So please consider, or if you know anybody in our congregation, that would be lifted up so that we could nominate four council offices in our December meeting. Today is actually Gold Star Mother's Day and Family Day. It's a national day recognized for Gold Star mothers and family who have lost loved ones in the line of duty of our service personnel. So we will remember our Gold Star mothers and families during our prayers of the church. Is there any other announcements to bring up for today? Anything? Any good news? I know someone just recently had a birthday, right? <laughs> 29 and holding. Amen. <laughs> if not, then let us rejoice and give thanks. For as Psalm 120 says, I was glad when they said to me, let us come to the house of the Lord. And let us, in our brief order, confession and forgiveness found in our bulletin. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, imploring him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Let us now come before Almighty God to confess our sins. Almighty God, merciful Father, I am troubled and in a sinner, confess to you all my sins and inequities, which I have found in you, and for which I ask to deserve your punishment. And I am sorry for them, and repent of them, and pray for your boundless mercy, for the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ. Be gracious and merciful to me, a poor and sinful being. Forgive my sins. Give me your Holy Spirit for the amendment of my sinful life and bring me to life everlasting. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. 
To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 328, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Be in want again. 
Break into shouts of great joy. Jacob is free again. Teach the nations to sing the song. The Lord has saved his people. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of love, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us into the way of salvation. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now have special music.
Thank you, Jeremiah. Our first lesson for this day comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, beginning at the first verse. The word of the Lord came to Ezekiel. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parents, as well as the life of the child, is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet, you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. Because the iniquity they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turns away from their wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life because they considered and turned away from all their transgressions that they have committed. They shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you, according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, otherwise iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourself a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. Here ends our first reading for this Sunday. Our psalm we will read responsibly by verse, Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. I will look to you, you quickly to shame. Let the treasures be disappointed in your schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me in you. For you are the God of my salvation. In you I trust in all my day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember God the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me in order to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble and joy of and teaches his way to the Lord. Our second reading for this Sunday comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians, the second chapter beginning at verse 1. Paul writes, If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourself. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, whom though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, as something to be exploited. But emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, 
And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Here ends our second reading. Our Gospel for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 21st chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you a question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? Well, they argued among each other and said, well, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, well, why do you believe him? But if we say of human origin, we're afraid of the crowd because they all regarded John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we don't know. And Jesus said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I'm doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first son and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And the son says, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second son and said the same thing. And the son said, I will go, sir. But then he didn't. Which of the two did the will of his father? Well, they replied, the first one. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you didn't believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believed him. The Gospel of our Lord. <coughs> Brothers, grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. For all of you who raised a family, even if you only had one child, no doubt at some time in your life of raising the children or the child, you came across the same scenario. You Tell your child or your children something, either to do or to do or whatever, and your child goes, It's not fair! It's just not fair! And you say to them, Yes, it is fair. And the child starts pouting even more. No, it is not. It's not fair. So and so gets to do everything they want. Why can't I? Then you try to explain to the child what fairness is, and it's a losing proposition. How do you think God feels as the ultimate parent, not just of one or two children, but all of humanity throughout the ages, of all the people that are yelling at God, it's not fair. 
just as it is in the first lesson today. That's what God was so upset in the first lesson with Ezekiel. They were using, they were in exile now in Babylon, the people that were in Judea. They were in exile in Babylon. The whole land is completely destroyed. The temple is burned to the ground and knocked over. There is nothing left. They're in exile in, in Babylon. And here are the exiles complaining, saying, why did this happen to us? And they were using that proverb of the parents eat the sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. In other words, the parents' mistakes, the children suffer for it. It wasn't the children's fault. They were blaming their parents and their forefathers for all the troubles that have fallen upon them. And God says, why are you saying that? It's not that, he said. Look at yourselves. Look at your own ways. And the exile said, no, it was not our fault. We didn't do nothing wrong. It is our parents and our grandparents and the grandparents before that's fault. It's just not fair that we have to suffer for their consequences. And we hear that a lot today, even in our world. How often have we heard that? Have we heard people say, it's not our fault that this has occurred. It's somebody else's fault. It was our parents' fault. It was our grandparents' fault. They set up this situation that this now happens, and we're the ones who are suffering the consequences. But just as God told Ezekiel back then, God is screaming at the top of his lungs now to us, saying, no it isn't, it's also your fault too. We are just as responsible today as anybody else for what is going on. Now we say to ourselves, whoa, whoa, don't get too defensive here. What did I do wrong that we're suffering these consequences? This is what happens when we start looking at our own wants and our own needs in society. When we start looking at what we want ourselves and we are not getting it. When we look within ourselves and say, why don't I deserve this? Then we tend to start blaming others. And that's breaking, if you remember our Ten Commandments series from back in the summer, that's breaking the ninth and the Tenth Commandment, thou shalt not covet. We think we deserve it. God, why didn't you bless me with this stuff? I deserve it. That's what the Israelites were saying. They didn't deserve this punishment. But yet here they are, they're in exile. God tells them plainly, if the wicked are committing iniquities, they shall surely die for it. But if the wicked turn from their ways and put away their iniquities, repent for it, they shall live. It's that simple, they shall live. Just like with the righteous person, if the righteous person is doing righteous things, but then decides to go and start doing bad things, iniquities, the bad things, then that person shall die for it. Because they're committing sins. We need to learn as people and as Christians. We are responsible for our own actions and not to lay the blame on other people or others. God plainly says it is our actions. Take a look at the Gospel lesson. Jesus tells a parable about two sons, and this is a very familiar scenario. You have two sons, he tells the first son, go out and work today. 
Better yet, today's scenario. Son, go mow the yard. And he said, no, I'm not going to mow the yard. I'm playing video games. But then after a while, the son relents and he goes and mows the yard. The other son says, yeah, I'll go mow the yard, Dad. But then gets distracted and runs off with his friends and never gets to it. Jesus said, which one of them obeyed the Father? The first one. Your actions is your responsibility is how is our relationship with God. What happened is that Israel, being the people of God, the children of Abraham, being the chosen people from way back of generations from Abraham that God said, you are my descendants forever, they took that to mean that they were not responsible for anything that happened to them because they were God's chosen people. They thought it was a get out of jail free card for them for everything. Nothing bad was supposed to happen to them because they were God's chosen people. But God said, no. It gives you the responsibility then of being who my people are, to love and serve your neighbor, not just to be there and to think that now you're entitled. It means now that you have the responsibility to show others what it's like to be the relationship with God. Just as we are today. We as Lutherans take great pride in that we say what Luther always says all the time, for we are saved by grace, through faith, and not by works. And what happens is, is that we decide to ourselves, well, since we are saved by grace through faith and not works, that means I don't need to do anything. No, yes you do. Because Martin Luther says that you may not, God may not need your good works, but your neighbor does. And so we have the responsibility as children of God and as people who are saved by grace to do good works to our neighbors to show others what it means to live in Christ's love for one another. And what does it mean to do good works? It means to help those feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit those in sick, in prison, to lend an arm around someone who is in grief, to comfort those that mourn, to be the peacemakers, to help those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, to guide those who are lost in this world, to show them that somebody does care about them when it looks like the whole world has rejected them. There are people out there who truly feel that they don't have a friend in the world, that the world is truly against them, and that nothing goes right for them. And that's where we come in then. To show them that yes, there is someone who does care about you. There is a loving God who loves you just as much as anybody else. There is a God who will lift you out of your despair and give you courage and faith to continue on in this world of darkness. You are not alone. For God is with you. And unlike others, God doesn't abandon you. That is our responsibility. To help them to see the light of Christ in a dark world. And there's a lot of darkness out there. But we need to remember then, just as God told Ezekiel, the people declared that God's ways were not fair. And God said, why are not my ways fair? What have I done that my ways are not fair? If you love me and serve my commandments and do what I say, you shall live. 
If you don't follow my commandments, if you break them and do wicked things, you will not live. But yet they say, God, your ways are not fair. So, Jesus, so God said that I will judge you according to your ways. What you think is best. And good thing we don't. I wouldn't want to be judged by the way my ways are. I would rather be judged by God's ways. Because here's the biggest difference. God's way of judging us was that he sacrificed his own son so that we may not be found guilty. That was God's way. God's way was to sacrifice his own son so that all of us who believe in him should not perish. For God says, why will you die, O Israel? I take no pleasure in the death of anyone. John 3, 17. For God did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save it. That's the whole purpose of God in our world and our life today, is not to condemn others, but to save it. That is the way of God, to save those who are lost. And he did that through Jesus. And so we are found not guilty because of Jesus. That is the way. But yet we say it's unfair. Do you think, take a moment and think, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, suffering and pain, do you think he turned to his father and said, Father, this is unfair? Do you think Jesus thought that? He said, God, why do I have to do it this way? Your way is unfair. Because I didn't sin, and yet I have to die. Why must I go through this? You think Jesus might have thought that? No, because he knew ahead of time. He knew being God's son, he knew what was coming. And he still did it out of love for all of us. Not just here in the present, but for those all in the past and those in the future. He knew out of love that this was the way of God had to be. For this was the way that we are forgiven in. That we have eternal life with. That's how much Jesus loves you. That is how much Jesus loves each one of us. Not just sitting here today, but everybody in the whole town of Petersburg, <coughs> in all of West Virginia, across the United States, through the whole world. That is how much Jesus loves each one of us. Is that he was willing to go and die for you. Yesterday in Washington, D.C., they had a National Day of Repentance and Prayer. Some of you might have seen it on the news. They were praying for this country to repent of its sins so that we may have God's blessing. And as I was watching it, this is not a judgment. I was not judging anybody. I said, for all of us who are there, I hope we remember that it's not the other guy's fault for the shape we're in. I hope and pray they also remember these words of God today in the lesson. It's also us too. It's our responsibility too. To be sure that we are living the Christian life. Not just the other people. 
but us too. For we also are God's people. And it's our responsibility to live as God's people. Because God's ways are fair. And it's in Him that we trust. May we always remember that. When someone complains to us that nothing is fair anymore, say yes, God's ways are fair. And that's who I believe in, with all my heart, my soul, and my strength. Our hymn for the day is hymn number 327, Rock of Ages.
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, turn this congregation away from our own interests towards the interests of others. Fill us with your compassion and sympathy. Bless the ministries of care in our community. We especially lift up, O oh Lord, our doctors and nurses, hospitals, nursing homes, our care workers, our pharmacies, all those who are involved in our health care, especially during this time of pandemic. Make us into signs of your mercy and justice for our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, thank you for those who have gone into the kingdom of heaven ahead of us, tax collectors and the prostitutes, those likely and unlikely, obedient and slow to learn. By their witness, teach us to confess Jesus Christ as Lord in life and in death. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust you in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord who taught us to pray. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive us our trespasses. And now we will do our New Testament canticle just as we did with our Old Testament canticle. We will start with the congregation with the refrain. Keep in mind that Jesus If we die with the Lord, we shall live with the Lord. If we endure with the Lord, we shall live with the Lord. Keep your mind that Jesus Christ has died for us, and has risen from the dead. He is our saving Lord. He is the joy for all ages. In Him is all our sorrow, and in Him all our joy. In Him hope of glory, and in Him all our love. Keep your mind that Jesus Christ has died for us. In him is our redemption and in him all our grace. In him our salvation and in him all our peace. We want to thank our trustees, also for Trent and for Darren and others who have helped. Our air conditioning unit has been installed. And so next week, besides blessing of the quilts, we'll be blessing the cool, fresh air. And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine onto us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our final hymn is hymn number 492.
And now go in peace and serve our risen Lord. Thank you.